up everybody Mike Guerrero here I am going today to Yuma Territorial Prison State Historic Park today we're gonna to be doing some exploring be checking out this prison we are over here for border madness but uh, making a quick stop checking out some cool stuff can't wait to show you guys On July 1st, 1876, the first seven inmates entered the territorial prison and were locked in the new cells they had built themselves. Thus began the legend of the Yuma Territorial Prison. There were 3,069 convicts total, including 29 women, 104 are buried on the site. In total, 111 convicts died here while serving their prison sentence. They died of disease, murder, suicide, and the attempt to escape. The graves are not marked, just rock mounds and neat rows. There were no executions as capital punishment was administered by the county. The Tucson citizen printed the following paragraph in their November 24, 1906 edition, describing the death at the prison. A convict's funeral. Death is the tyrant that strikes fear into the hearts of most of the convicts. It means those that are not claimed and are without friends will lie beneath the barren plot just outside the penitentiary, the convict cemetery. Piles of rocks shaped like a grave with a plain slab given the name and number marked the final resting place. Services are brief at a convict's funeral. There are no mourners, no tears, no flowers. A simple burial service by a minister or priest and that is all. With a commanding view of the area and situated atop of the prison's original water supply, this tower is a reconstruction of one of the many towers which overlooked the prison and guarded against escapes. To the east, there is a newly restored Yuma East Wetlands Restoration Project. The Sally Port is one of the last remaining original adobe structures of the 1876 Yuma Territorial Prison. As we make our way through the Sally Port, we enter the museum. Through the museum, we come to the cell blocks. This is the original section of the prison. This area provides a vivid sense of what it was like to be incarcerated at the prison. Six prisoners to a cell. It is limited by its location on Prison Hill and unable to expand. The prison closed its doors in 1909. In the cell blocks, you'll hear haunting echoes of hard time and a hard place as you walk through the cell blocks. Included in this area is the infamous dark cell for incorrigible prisoners. New Yard was constructed in 1900 to help relieve overcrowding. The entrance to the library was closed and the first four cells were made from the library excavation in the South Bank. Eight more cells were dug into the east side of the same bank. These cells were used to separate and isolate unruly prisoners before the incorrigible ward was built. Near the center of the 119 by 84 foot exercise yard was a building referred to as the bunkhouse. This structure was used to house consumptive patients or those suffering from tuberculosis of the lungs. There were women that were incarcerated here at the Yuma Territorial Prison. One of the most famous was Pearl Hart. She was sentenced to five years for her part in the Arizona's last stagecoach robbery in 1899. The prison bell. The bell's original purpose was to sound an alarm of escape. The ringing of the bell could be heard for many miles, alerting the townspeople of Yuma of an escape, riot, or even worse. In later years, it would be adopted to also call the men to and from work.
The dark cell was reserved for inmates caught fighting, trying to escape, or violating other rules. Superintendent M.M. M. McNary, for example, tossed inmates into the dark cell just for gambling. Prisoners sentenced to time in the dark cell were stripped to their underwear, placed inside a cage, and chained to a couple of stout rings mounted on the floor. There was no light, except for the light that came in the hole from the roof. No visitors were allowed, and the only time visitors came in were guards when they used to bring in food. Dinner consisted of bread and water. There are some stories that a sadistic guard would drop snakes down the ventilation hole. However, one historian does caution that those stories have not been verified and are probably not true. As we make our way out of the cell blocks, we head back through the museum. This is situated on the original site of the prison mess hall. This New Deal era building was built with 60,000 adobe bricks made by humans during the Great Depression. It opened as a city museum in March of 1941 until Arizona State Parks assumed the management of the park. In 2010, the museum's exhibits were completely upgraded. Of the 112 prisoners who died while at Yuma Territorial Prisoners, very few died violently. There were eight shot trying to escape, six were by suicide, five work accidents, two homicide by another prisoner, and one executed by Yuma County. Nearly 50% died of tuberculosis and another 33% died of natural causes. Given the hard lives these convicts lived and the many who were transferred here with tuberculosis, it is a tribute to the prison's medical care that so few of the 30,000 prisoners died while in custody. The Yuma Crossing is a National Historic Landmark because it served as the only safe crossing of then wild and uncontrollable Colorado River in the 1800s. The first railroad entered Arizona here in Yuma in 1877, just as the infamous Yuma Territorial Prison opened. Today, Yuma celebrates its rich heritage and its vital connection to the Colorado River. The new Colorado River State Historic Park tells the story of the past, present, and the future of the river that supports life in the entire Southwest.